Apply pads. Plug in connector. Shock advised. Deliver shock now. Press the orange button now. Shock delivered. In many countries around the world, Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death. It is caused by an abnormal heart rhythm, in most cases, ventricular fibrillation. This rhythm is caused by abnormal and very fast electrical activity in the heart. During ventricular fibrillation, the heart cannot pump blood effectively. The only effective treatment is defibrillation, delivered as soon as possible. Every minute that passes from sudden cardiac arrest until defibrillation reduces the patient's chance of survival by 7 to 10 percent. Forerunner is a biphasic, semi-automatic, external defibrillator, or AED. It is designed to identify and treat ventricular fibrillation and certain ventricular tachycardias, guiding you through the process with text and voice prompt instructions. In this training video, we are using a Forerunner model that displays ECG and heart rate information and has a manual override button. Your Forerunner model may not have these features. Defibrillation with an automatic external defibrillator is easy to learn. Many flight attendants, law enforcement personnel, First aid personnel and firefighters have been doing defibrillation for years. For many people, defibrillation is easier to learn than cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR. Forerunner use is indicated if your patient is unconscious, is not breathing, and has no detectable pulse. To treat a victim of sudden cardiac arrest, you need a forerunner with the battery installed and a package of defibrillation pads. Push the on-off button. Forerunner will guide you with voice prompts and on-screen displays. Apply pads. Plug-in connector. To apply the pads, first remove any clothing covering the patient's chest. Wipe dry any water or moisture. If necessary, shave or clip excessive hair from the patient's chest. Pads have two functions, to sense the heart's electrical activity and to deliver the shock. For defibrillation to be effective, the pads must be in the correct location on the patient's bare chest and adhere securely. Illustrations to help you place the pads correctly are provided on the Forerunner. On the pad package and on the pads themselves. Peel off the backing and place one pad just below the patient's right clavicle, also known as the collarbone. Firmly press the entire surface of the pad, including the edges, to the patient's chest. Place the second pad over the ribs on the patient's left side in line with the axilla, or armpit. The pad should be below the patient's breast. Press firmly, including the edges of the pad. 
The second pad is placed in line with the axilla and under the breast for all body types, including men, overweight individuals, and women. The pads come pre-connected to a cable. Insert the pads connector into the connector socket, above the flashing light. Press firmly. The connector will click into place when properly inserted. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. Forerunner automatically analyzes the heart rhythm to see if a shock is indicated. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Press the orange button now. If Forerunner detects a shockable rhythm, the orange button will flash and you will be prompted to press the orange button. Make certain that no one, including yourself, is touching the patient before you press the shock button. Press the orange shock button. Shock delivered. After a shock, Forerunner continues to automatically analyze the heart rhythm. Voice and screen prompts will alert you if additional shocks are advised. To minimize the time needed for analysis, no one should touch or move the patient during this time. If Forerunner gives a shock advised prompt while you are transporting the patient, stop the vehicle if possible and wait 15 seconds for Forerunner to confirm its analysis. Your protocol may direct you to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation at certain intervals. Your forerunner should be programmed for your protocol, so all you need to do is follow all prompts that direct you to assess the patient and perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation if indicated. If your protocol includes a pause for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, the screen displays a bar that fills as the pause time elapses. At the completion of the pause, Forerunner will direct you to stop touching the patient and will automatically analyze the rhythm to determine if a shock is now indicated. If a no shock advised message is given, the heart rhythm is not presently treatable with defibrillation. Forerunner will direct you to assess the patient and perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation if indicated. Forerunner will continue to assess the rhythm during this time. If a potentially shockable rhythm is detected, Forerunner will prompt you to stop touching the patient so it can confirm its analysis. If you get a troubleshooting prompt, Stay calm and follow Forerunner's instructions. For example, if you get a troubleshooting prompt that refers to the pads, press pads firmly to patient's bare chest. Make sure the pads are securely on the patient's chest. Press firmly, including all edges of the pads. Make sure there is no obvious damage to the pads, cable, and pads connector. Finally, make sure the pads connector is fully inserted into the connector socket. If the prompt continues, remove the pads, dry and shave the chest as necessary, and reapply new pads. Refer to the user's guide for complete information about troubleshooting. You can initiate an automated, comprehensive check of the Forerunner simply by installing a battery. Perform this battery insertion test, or BIT, when you place the Forerunner in service or whenever a problem is suspected. This test checks the Forerunner's battery capacity, internal circuitry, and user verifiable components. To initiate this test, remove and reinstall the battery. Press the battery firmly it will click in place when properly installed. 
the screen will display a bar that fills as the test progresses. During the test, the screen will also flash and blink, and buttons will light up. When the test is completed, the screen displays the test results. If the forerunner passes the test, the status indicator will display alternating dark and hourglass shapes. If not, install a new battery and do another test. If the forerunner doesn't pass the second test, remove the forerunner from service and contact HeartStream customer service. After the automatic portion of the test is complete, the forerunner begins interactive tests that let you verify the correct operation of the screen, buttons, and speaker. The forerunner periodically performs automatic self-tests. During these tests, the screen may flash and blink, and buttons may light up. This is normal. The status indicator always shows the results of the last self-test. If the status indicator shows alternating dark and hourglass shapes, the last self-test passed and the forerunner is ready for use. If you see any other display in the status indicator, with or without an audible chirping alert sound, the forerunner requires attention. Perform a battery insertion test as described earlier. In the unlikely event that you need to use the forerunner while it is doing a self-test, Simply press the on-off button to stop the test. It will be rescheduled for a later time. Your Forerunner is an advanced life-saving tool to help you treat victims of sudden cardiac arrest in your own community or workplace. Nothing else you learn will have a greater impact on your ability to save a life.